Okay, welcome back. I have had the Maverick running, and running pretty good. I actually drove it about 10 miles or so, but it, it has a dead spot, and uh, I think I've got that narrowed down to what's going on. I'm, I know I do, and I'm really losing faith in um, remanufactured parts. I, I, I'll show you why. This uh, It turned out the distributor was bad, as I suspected, and let me show you something. So I have this, I have the distributor out here on the bench. I just snugged it down on the vise, and I put a magnetic base and a dial indicator on here. And these uh, bushings, you know, this uh, the distributor shaft. You know, there's bushings in the housing, and the distributor shaft, you know, rotates in those bushings. Well, you know, when they're new, they're they're set up really, really close. That you know, there's just enough clearance to where it'll rotate but you know it doesn't shake so they they really need to be neat a really neat fit um, because as that rotor goes around inside the distributor cap inside these points uh these contacts in here that uh you know that rotor really needs to be at a particular distance and it should be equal the whole way around there so every cylinder is getting the same amount of same amount of spark so if the shaft is worn, then your 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 rotor can move around in there, and then it gets very you know varied amounts of spark. So, what I found out was, um, well, there is some issue in here whether it was grounding out, uh, and the points weren't giving consistent spark. So I did get a, go get another distributor, and I, uh, I knew right away when I was setting it up that. And I was, you know, I was cranking the engine over and I was setting the points that the new ones, they definitely had a much healthier spark. So something in this old one is, uh, you know, shorting or grounding out. And I think there's a little isolator, little isolator, whether they're plastic or fiber, uh, like washers that isolate uh, this plate from the, yeah, I'm not sure about all that. It's been a while. But anyway, the new ones spark great. And I knew that. It would fire up with it and sure enough it did but what happened was let me get back to these bushings this you know when they're new how can I get rid of that glare when they're new they should just have um, you know maybe it'd be hard to uh, even detect really uh, a new one because they're set up so neatly you might get a oops like one like one thousandths you know one to two thousandths play out of it uh, they're considered really worn out and needing replaced when they get up to uh, when that play exceeds six so in this one here this old one now you can see it goes it's it's well beyond six so that uh, that gap you know in the rotor and the cap can really start you know varying from it depends where you put it some places it's you know right about 10 a little, little over maybe yeah Anyway, they're they're beyond they're worn enough to where it starts affecting that spark and how, how the thing runs. The trouble with the new one I bought, okay, I was saying everything in it was new, it got better spark. But you know, just for the heck of it, that new one, well, it was a remanufactured, not new. Um, you know, just for the heck of it, I grabbed it and wiggled it. And I'm thinking that play feels as bad as the old one. So I set it up here on the bench. You know, after it ran, you know, after I drove the car and said, you know what, there's still a dead spot, it, it's acting goofy. Uh, I took it back out and, I mean, I knew it had the play in it before I put it in, but I thought, oh, what the heck, we'll try it. <laughs> and then, of course, it had bad symptoms, so I ended up taking it back out. I put it up here, you know, and it's just as bad as this old one. They remanufactured it and didn't bother putting new bushings in it. Now... On the, you know, go searching around the internet. Yeah, you find a lot of, you know, um, specifications on end play, like up and down. Uh, that there's a, uh, there's plenty of forums and information on that. But I, I, like I say, it's been a while. I thought, well, what's the side to side play when the bushings are worn? Not the, not the up and down. What's side to side? And then I did find. That's when I did find the. Uh, I did find that information and. Yeah, we're 
yeah, we're well beyond the uh, six thousands uh, that they're considered needing replaced at. So what I did was I took the, I returned it, <laughs> and I said, uh, and keep in mind I can't find anything online as far as brand new goes. They're all everything's remanufactured, unless I wanted to buy a real high end conversion uh, conversion kit from summit racing that has a uh, it's whole electronic ignition um you know swap over and uh those are a few hundred few hundred bucks like 354 or i forget but uh and it's not the money i don't you know i've had four of these before my fifth marriage <laughs> all four of them they've all been points in condenser you know when they're set up right they run fantastic they're great they've you know millions of cars have gone for decades back in the days so on points and condenser you know there's nothing wrong with them so i want to keep it original and the way it should be it was meant to be points and condenser but you can't find the old original distributors new anymore they're all remanufactured and i can only find this one company it seems like all the auto parts stores carry the same one the car cardon or cardone uh, remanufacturing company in Mexico <laughs> supplies O'Reilly's advanced AutoZone Napa they're all from the same source so it's a roll of the dice I'm, I took that one back the new one's supposed to be in the next one is supposed to be in this morning so I'm gonna go pick that up and hopefully I'll get lucky and that uh, maybe the bushings on it were replaced and or even if they weren't maybe they're not worn as bad if they're inside of that six i'll be happy i guess i'll just run it and but i'm gonna go get that this morning there is one other issue too about remanufactured parts that master cylinder um i just can't get a good brake pedal you know pumping it up and and bleeding them i mean i bench bled that uh, um per the instructions i bench bled the master cylinder first and uh, we flushed out all the lines in the thing and all new wheel cylinders on all four wheels. Um, bled all the air out of the system, but I just cannot get a good, you know, solid feeling brake pedal inside. They're, they're just still real, you know, soft and spongy. Uh, even after exercising for a while, thinking maybe there's still some air trapped in the system somewhere and, you know, working the pedals. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to go around them all again. And so I bled a good bit out thinking... <laughs> Uh, you know, starting from the furthest away, that back one, and I didn't get any air out of it after pumping the reservoir, reservoir about half empty, and then I uh, moved over to this one, and then to that one, then to this one, and I I did get a wee little bit of air out of this, this up here, but uh, it wasn't enough. It didn't make a difference, so, you know, that's a remanufactured also, and it's just not getting the job done. So I'm going to take that back too, but fortunately those are still available new. So I'm going to return that remanufactured one. I'm going to get a brand new one and we're going to go with that. So, you know, if it wasn't for that faulty distributor and a faulty, I mean, all the other parts I've gotten for this car has been fine. Those two items are, have failed. And uh, if it wasn't for that, we'd be done. I'd have been on my way to the tire shop. And there's another case of bad workmanship. My son thought he'd do me a favor, and it was quite nice of him. He took these tires and wheels down to his work. And, well, these are new tires, but he took the old, you know, all the old stuff down to the, his shop. Well, it's not his shop. He happens to work there. And they took the old tires off, put the new ones on. Well, this one seems to have a slow leak. It's not the tire, it's probably the, it's probably the seal. They didn't clean, clean the wheel well enough. Or, actually, it could be the valve stem. They didn't bother replacing, put new valve stems in it. Uh, and they didn't balance them properly. They struggled and they had these weird adult, these weird weights on it. And they, and they had a bunch of them on there. It's like, something is not right here. I've never, my son just pulled all the weights off. He says, they, they goofed up. They, some, something's not right. Uh, so, anyway... I would be on my way down to my local tire shop here. I'll have these all dismounted, all new valve stems in. They they have a good practice of they clean the rims uh, real good so that there's a good seal with the tire back on. They'll balance them and they'll be 
and they'll be done they'll be done right so you know another case of somebody not just just not doing a good job and then i was going to go from there up to the alignment shop because i put the whole new front suspension on the car uh, so and i've just kind of by eye got it to where it's drivable the wheels are pointing the same direction pretty close but i need to get up to the alignment shop and have them really you know dial that in and uh we would have been done it's it's ready to go except for these few last uh that few last things but i'm gonna go get that distributor we're gonna pop it in it should fire right up okay you're not gonna believe this I don't believe it but we're gonna stop at the Ford dealer and I know they're gonna laugh at me when I I know hang on I gotta tell you something okay I'm gonna try to show you this here uh, so I picked up the new one well the supposedly remanufactured one and and look at this look at this wait a minute is that is that I don't know if you can be able, I don't know if you can be able to see this or not. Okay. That's that's worse than the one I returned. That's that's worse than my old one. And it's worse than the and it's worse than the one I returned. Yeah. I mean, think about that. If you got those of you that are familiar with points, you know, they're supposed to be set, I think it 20 maybe it's 25 thousands i don't know i set mine with a dwell meter i don't use a feeler gauge but you know if they're set at 20 just say and there's 15 thousands worth of or more on this one worth of wobble what do you think that's going to do to your point setting yeah but i already mentioned what you know the rotor inside of the cap dancing around what about the point setting this, this is a disaster so I left Autos, or I mean, O'Reilly's. He's ordering two more in, and they're not going to be until Friday. And then he, um, it's a roll of the dice. We're hoping we find we get a good one. Maybe um, that's a shame. Two out of two are no good. So maybe we'll get lucky. Uh, so I thought, I'll get on to Napa. And the guy down there, he's like, yeah, that's, yeah, we get them from the same supplier. Sorry. Um but I might have a lead on another manufacturer in California. So when I get back to my computer, I'll have to investigate that lead. Um, but, um, so, yeah, so the guy at Napa, he looked at that and he's been around a while. He's familiar with distributors. I mean, new cars don't, they haven't used distributors in cars, newer cars for, I don't know, quite a while now. Um, so this is definitely like old school technology. But he's been around long enough that he's he's familiar. He knows this stuff has to be right. He said, that's a mess. I'm like, thank you. I'm not going crazy here. So I thought, I'm going to stop here just for a laugh. The last time I went to get parts for um, an older vehicle, and it wasn't this old. It was like a 1990. They, As soon as I mentioned a year, they kind of laughed. Like, you're, we're not going to have it so um when i go in as soon as i say 1971 they're probably gonna be yeah get out of here i'm still considering well we'll see what that auto line um i'll just see what i can find out about them it's worth just going to a whole nother manufacturer i can't believe those bushings have been overlooked as far as being a critical component uh, and not getting replaced that's crazy um hopefully that auto line uh company they realize that that is critical and they actually remanufacture theirs theirs properly so that's certainly worth looking at um if not i'll see what i can find out there if not i'm really just going to take one of these newer ones and um i'll get material i'll see if i can find distributor shaft bushings the guy at napa couldn't find a listing on them uh, so i might have to make my own but I just rebuild the one I have, but yeah, that I say this, the vacuum diaphragm on mine is blown out. So I'm gonna have to pay for one of these that aren't done completely and properly and 
bring the, uh, redo the bushings that bring them into spec. What a predicament. Yep. No good. That, um, at least she wasn't rude. Yeah, last time I went and asked for something older, I, you know, it was, it was like, what are you in here wasting my time for? Kind of feeling there, you know. It was, oh, I forgot my seatbelt. Um, don't worry, I'll put it on. We're, we're just around the corner here from the next place anyway. She did say, uh, I did explain, well, can you even look it up? You know, sometimes Googling, you know, if you at least have a part number, an original Ford part number, you know, you can, uh, you can maybe find it somewhere else. Like some people have new old stock and um, it just sure helps. And she says, no, she could look stuff up as far back as 1970 or 1980. Well, the Mavericks in 1971, so we're waiting on somebody here to parallel park and they're not... I don't know. He'll get it. Alright, so I'm going up to a place here in Freeport. It's a little old. This is maybe just for the fun of it and for uh, just to make sure I'm just not losing my mind. There's an old mechanic up here. He worked at an old Ford dealer. Um, for those of you familiar with the Freeport, Pennsylvania area, if you remember viewers for I think he worked out there way back in the 70s so he would have been familiar with the 60s and 50 you know plenty of you know the points and condenser era you know the distributors so I'm gonna say take a look at this new distributor and see what you think <laughs> what's your opinion I don't know there it is BJ service when he uh, when viewers Ford closed, he bought his own shop here. It's just a little place, and uh, yeah, but he knows the stuff. All right, well, we had a good laugh, <laughs> and and he, yeah, he gets it. He says, "Yeah, it's you know they haven't put distributors in cars for years, even new mechanics coming out of tech school." You know, don't know what a carburetor is or a, you know, a distributor. And I mean, they might know what it is from their, their car guys, and I'm sure they've heard of it, they've seen one. But you know, what they're trained for, what they do, has nothing to do with them. And, you, know, you go into in a new mechanic shop or a, a dealership, you're working on much newer stuff. There's no no need to know about this old stuff. So, and probably the same thing happening where they're where they're re. Uh, reconditioning reconditioning these is they don't realize how critical of a part that is they just well, we'll just do this this and this do it it'll be all right now that's a critical you know component that has to be right so he agreed yeah you'll probably have to make your own bushings and or maybe you'll find them yeah but that's not right the way it is <laughs> uh, oh boy okay seatbelt on this time there are other resources uh, I'm probably gonna have to use I'm pretty sure I'll find those bushings uh, again I might find a better distributor to begin with from auto line out of California and I think their uh, mother company is actually from uh, in Canada but uh, again that's that's gonna probably be my next look at but as a backup I would have my research done there's other resources like um, Auto Crafters makes a ton of parts, carries a ton of parts for a lot of suppliers for older, uh, you know, classics. There's also Melvin's Classic Car Parts. Uh, I think he specializes in Fords. So those guys, you know, those people, if they don't have them, I, I think they'll have connections and, and resources. They'll, I, you know, I will get what I'm looking for. It's just I have to hunt a little harder for it. I don't think the uh, yeah I don't think the Mavericks are gonna run today. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time dropping that distributor that I know is not right I'm in it. It'll it, it'll just do the same thing it did with the last one. It'll backfire real bad at certain speeds and um, mainly when you get up to like 60 and you let off and then it backfires so bad it it's it'll scare you. And and two when you're pulling out with just a real real light load. 
you know, just easy on the gas, it, it misses, and then once you get past a certain point, uh, and put a little more, once you put your foot in it a little bit, and put it under a load, it, uh, it smooths out and runs good. And then when you let off, it backfires, and yeah, it's because that spark is under different loads, that shaft is in there doing, moving around and doing, I know, I know what I'm talking about, okay? All right, y'all, that's, that's enough for today. We'll get back once I've made a little more progress. Um, thanks for coming along. Thanks for listening. Thanks for paying attention. <laughs> thanks for uh, criticizing, constructive or not, whatever. All right, I'll see you next time.